I have had the Capital One Venture X for just over a year at this point. And with the popularity of this card in recent past, I wanted to put my two cents in about it after getting to fully experience it for myself. Now, I really only have one main goal with this video, and that's to answer the question, is the Capital One Venture X really still worth it? This is going to be a multi-part video, like always, with chapters down below if you want to skip to the parts that interest you the most. But before you do that, to help me make up for the lost retention there, I just ask that you go ahead and leave a like on this video and check to see if you're subscribed to the channel as well. With that being said, let's dive in, starting with the welcome offer. So I applied for the Capital One Venture X on February 24th of 2023, and that was during this card's base welcome offer of 75,000 points for spending $4,000 on the card in the first three months of having it. So the points guys valuation of Capital One's miles are 1.85 cents per point, meaning that that welcome offer is worth roughly $1,400. But of course, it does strongly depend on your redemption. So don't just take that at face value. This card has also had multiple other welcome offers on it come up since it you know came out on the market. For one, whenever it was first released, it had a 100,000 point offer for spending $10,000 on the card in the first six months of having it. And then in recent past, like within the last month or so at the time you're recording this, they had some referral offers going around for 90,000 points for just spending $4,000 in three months, which is technically the best return on spend offer that we've seen. And while we're on this topic, I do want to mention that, of course, if you want to see the highest public welcome offers at the time of you watching this video, you can always check the link down in my description to learn how to apply. And if you go through with that link, it directly supports me at no cost to you. So I'd appreciate it if you did so. Now, welcome offers are great and all, but that doesn't help us if we can't get approved for this card. So let's talk about Capital One's application rules really quickly. And they really have two main ones that you've probably heard about, the two card rule, as well as the one and six rule. Starting with the two card rule or the two card limit, whatever you want to call it, it's generally known that Capital One restricts you to only having two personal credit cards with them. However, as data points continue to come out, this seems to be a more relaxed rule as of recent past. And obviously, if you do have data points about this rule or the following, then please be sure to leave those down below to help people out. But what seems to be the real rule here with the two card limit is that you can only have two of their starter credit cards. So for example, like the Platinum card or the Quicksilver, but your limit for the Prime cards, like the Capital One Venture X, is much higher than that. So basically all this to say that applying for the Capital One Venture X, you should not be impacted by this two card limit. This rule also does not apply to their co-branded cards or their business cards. And two of their business cards right now, the Capital One Venture X Business and the Capital One Spark Cash Plus cards have some insanely high welcome offers that I'll link down below for you as well. Granted, you have to spend a ton of money to hit those welcome offers, but it might make sense for some of y'all. The second rule I mentioned is the one in six rule. And technically what this rule states is that you're not able to get approved for more than one card with Capital One every six months. And this goes for personal and business cards, technically. Once again, though, I've read a ton of different data points about this, and it seems like this may have been relaxed as well to more of a like one in 90 day rule, or maybe doesn't even apply at all anymore. So your mileage may vary with this one as well, but I at least just wanted to make y'all aware of the rules that are out there in case you hadn't heard of them before. Next up though, let's talk about how much money I've earned from spending on this card in the last year. Just for reference though, so you don't have to go look this up yourself, the Capital One Venture X is going to give you 10X back on hotels and car rentals booked through Capital One Travel, 5X on airfare booked through Capital One Travel, and 2X on all of your other purchases. In reality though, while yes, those Capital One Travel categories are really solid, most every luxury travel credit card out there has similar categories in their portals, but that 2X miscellaneous category is what really helps this card stand out from the rest. It's really the only luxury travel credit card out there besides maybe like the US Bank Altitude Reserve that has an actual good catch-all category because most of them out there are only going to give you 1x back on most of your purchases, but you at least get that bumped up to 2x with the Venture X and that extra 1x back really does add up over time. As for my specific numbers though, let me go ahead and dive into those. And first of all, I want to preface this by saying that I have been spending towards multiple card bonuses over the last year while I've had this card. So while it has been my main catch-all credit card, it's not probably getting as much use as some of y'all out there, but I do still think it was one of my most used cards of 2023 and the beginning of 2024. So from February of 2023 until now, one year later, through the spinning categories on this card, mostly being the 2X category besides I think one rental car I booked through Capital One Travel, I earned a total of 19,847 points from spending. And remember, also does not include the signup bonus, but we're going to total them all up at the end, so don't worry about that. And for full transparency here, I also earned a lot of referral points on this card in the last year as well, but I'm approaching the review of this card in this video completely without that in mind. Okay, so now we know that it generally offers a pretty great welcome offer and the spending categories are at least respectable. So it's not seemingly overrated at a quick glance, but now to really answer that question, we need to get 
get into the meat and potatoes of this card, that being the annual fee and the credits and benefits that help make up that annual fee. The Capital One Venture X comes at you with a $395 annual fee, which is actually the lowest of its class. Like for example, the Amex Platinum has a $695 annual fee and the Chase Sapphire Reserve has a $550 annual fee. But for the everyday credit card user, $395 is still a big chunk of change. So how do we make that up, you may ask? Well, let's just dive into all these credits and benefits. To start, we have the $300 annual travel credit, and this is rewarded to you in the form of a statement credit whenever you make purchases through Capital One Travel. So the main downside to this credit is that you do have to book travel through their portal, but in reality, one trip a year through their portal is not that hard to do. So while it's annoying, I don't think it's a deal breaker. I actually used this credit for myself last year when I did my road trip from Austin, Texas to Charleston, South Carolina and back. But the part of the trip that I booked through Capital One Travel actually had to get refunded to me. And I'm very lucky that they did refund the money to me considering it was a non-refundable booking. And now come to think of it, they just refunded it to my card account. They didn't refund it to my Capital One Travel credit account, I guess. So I wonder if I could have like double dipped on that, but it doesn't matter now. It's a new card member year, so. I just have a new $300 annual travel credit to use this year. This card also has a 10,000 mile anniversary bonus that's just given to you every single time you renew the card, which is pretty nice. And that would be valued at about $185 using the points guys valuation. You get a credit for a global entry or TSA pre-check every four to five years. And I personally use this to get myself global entry, which does come with TSA pre-checks. So that's a little hack for y'all if you didn't know that. And it also was like impossible to get an appointment in the Austin airport, which is my home airport. So I did use an appointment scanner to help me out with that. And I would highly recommend that you do that too if you can't find appointments at your home airport. One of the biggest perks of this card is the airport lounge access it gives you, that including unlimited access to the Capital One lounges, as well as access to their partner lounges like Plaza Premium and a Priority Pass Select membership. I will note though that the Priority Pass Select membership does not include access to the restaurants and spas like the Priority Pass Select membership on the Chase Sapphire Reserve gives you, for example, but still powerful nonetheless. And note that card members of the Venture X, as well as their authorized users, can bring up to two guests to the Capital One lounge lounges and the Plaza Premium lounges and unlimited guests into Priority Pass lounges. So that's a pretty powerful perk right there. The only lounge I've been able to use this perk for personally would be the Capital One lounge in DFW. And I was honestly only in there for a few minutes, but I could tell that it was one, extremely nice and two, extremely popular because there was a lot of people in there. This card also will give you four free authorized users, which also comes with their own Priority Pass Select membership. And that is really a ton of value when you consider the fact that a normal Priority Pass Select membership costs like $300 a year or something like that. That. And I'm honestly not sure that this perk is going to stick around forever, but it's at least nice to have while we do. As for just some additional benefits to list off real quick, this card currently gives you Hertz President Circle status, but that is being taken away in 2025. This is actually a big blow to me because that's one of the biggest reasons I use this card. It's kind of like my car rental card as well as my catch all. So that is going to play a role in my review of the card next year for sure. It also gives you stuff like primary car rental collision and damage coverage, no foreign transaction fees, cell phone protection, not only for stuff like actual theft, but also also for involuntary parting, which basically means if you lose your phone, and that's something that not every card cell phone protection coverage will give you. And then there are obviously a lot more benefits than I just listed here, so it's always important to do your own research, but that was hopefully a very quick but in-depth review of the card. So all in all at this point, this card sounds pretty great, but there is more than meets the eye with it, and I wanna make sure we get a full picture of it. So let me tell you about some of the cons that I've personally come across. One of the biggest cons about this card is that it is a Capital One credit card, and jokes aside, it does actually play a big role in why this card maybe isn't as popular as it could be. But the first reason I say that is because you have limited access to transfer partners. They do have access to a lot of transfer partners, so the number isn't limited, but you are limited to hotel transfer partners as well as domestic airline transfer partners. For example, there are only two hotel partners with Capital One, one of which being Choice, and the transfer rate from Capital One to Choice is one-to-one. -one. But if you had Cities credit cards, for example, and could transfer over to Choice through them, you get a one-to-two transfer rate, which is two times as good. You can book domestic flights through airline alliances, which I've talked about in some recent videos of mine. But the fact of the matter is that compared to an ecosystem like Amex or Chase, the transfer partner list is just a bit lackluster. Secondly, with just the Capital One Venture X, you do lack a pure cashback option. With lenders like Citi and Chase, for example, you can cash out your points for one cent per point in cashback form if you wanted to. But with the Capital One Venture X, if you just wanted a straight statement credit or cash deposited to your bank account, you could only do so at a half a cent per point rate, which is something I would never recommend you do with your Capital One miles, especially when you can use them with those transfer partners to get outsized value. The third con I want to talk about here today is that it is pretty hard to get approved for. Yes, I know that might be kind of counterintuitive because we think of Capital One's credit card as being 
I guess, more targeted towards the subprime or beginner markets. But based on a ton of data points that I've been seeing, Capital One seems very likely to deny you for this card if you don't get it early on in your journey, meaning that they are one pretty inquiry sensitive, but they are especially like card account sensitive. So if you wait to get this card until your 10th or 15th or whatever credit card, you're likely not going to get it even if you already have like an 800 plus credit score. I could be wrong, but I feel like a luxury travel credit card should probably be targeted at people with, you know, premium credit scores and stuff like that. But that just doesn't seem to be the case with the VentureX. Also to boot, Capital One is going to hard pool all three bureaus whenever you apply for this card. So that makes it even more important to have a high likelihood of getting approved. And luckily they do have a pre-approval tool for this credit card. So that'll at least give you some more hope before you use my link down below to apply for it. And the fourth and last con I want to talk about here today is honestly probably the most worrying one. And that is that they keep removing benefits from this card. This started with the priority pass access getting nerfed because when the card was first released, the priority pass select membership with this card would allow you access to the restaurants and spas, which made it the top of its class in line with like the Chase Sapphire Reserve. But they decided to remove that at some point last year. Then they extended those negative changes into changing the way that you actually received the $300 annual travel credit. And what they basically did there is make sure that you don't earn any points for that $300 worth of spend. When in the past, you were able to get, you know, five or 10 X back on those purchases and then get the credit awarded. So a small thing once again, but still compounds. And then most recently, like I mentioned earlier, they're removing the Hertz president circle status that this card gives you in 2025. Each one of these small blows may seem like pretty harmless, but the reality is that over time, if this is the trend that they continue to go down, this card is likely going to become not worth it. Maybe I'm pessimistic, but usually companies aren't going to just randomly start adding value to their credit cards. They usually continue to remove credits and benefits and increase the annual fee, hence why I'm not super gung-ho on the future of this card while it is very powerful right now. Okay, so now that we are Venture X pros, at least we know most of the good things about it and a lot of the bad, let's get back into my personal experience with it and discuss the total value I've gotten from this card so far, as well as what I can expect to get from it in years to come. So of course, whenever I first applied for this card in February of 2023, I got the welcome offer of 75,000 points, which is going to make up a large chunk of the points that I've earned on this card so far. And then like we discussed earlier, my total earnings from spend on this card so far is 19,847 points outside of the welcome offer. That brings us to a grand total of 94,847 points, so just shy of 100k. And before I tell you the total value that these points could give me, I guess we haven't discussed the breakdown of Capital One's miles and what each redemption method is worth. So to start, I will say that you can get one cent per point through their travel portal, which is a way that some people like to use their points. However, what I would do with Capital One miles instead is book the travel portal stuff in cash because you get those points for that booking, and then you can use their point eraser tool or whatever it's called to offset that travel purchase at one cent per point at a later date, therefore giving you like a 1.1 or 1.05 cent per point redemption. So it helps a little bit. But further than that, you can get, you know, an estimated two cents per point with their travel partners. Granted, that's an average and it's estimated. So your mileage is going to vary on this one pretty drastically. But that's like a table minimum that we've seen for a lot of the transferable currencies out there. So we'll use that today. And then, like I did say earlier, you're only going to get 0.5 cents per point in cashback form with the Venture X alone. If you had the Saver One, for example, or a different cashback credit card with Capital One, you could get one cent per point with those cards. But Capital One miles are only worth half a cent per point in cashback form. So with that being known now, I can tell you the actual cash value of those points that I earned. So at one cent per point through the travel portal, I could get $948.47. But with transfer partners at an estimated two cent per point average, I could get $1,896.94. So we're talking just under $1,000 through the travel portal and just under two on average through transfer partners. And I'm not even going to mention the cashback value of those points because I would never recommend you use your Capital One miles in that form. But as we can see here, that is a ton of value to get in the first year of having a credit card. Even if for some reason I did not use any of the credits and benefits on this card in the first year, I'd still be earning over $600 in value through the travel portal and $1,600 through transfer partners technically. So obviously this card seems like an awesome one to add, especially if you can add it during an elevated welcome offer period. So that's great and all, but obviously most of my value in year one came from that welcome offer. So what can I expect to get in years to come? I would say that if I kept using this card basically like I am now, I could expect to earn roughly 15,000 points or so, mainly through the 2X category that I use this card for, being that it's my catch-all for the most part, which would only be a value of $150 through the travel portal and $300 with transfer partners. If I did get that average two cents per point with transfer partners, that means that my effective annual fee would be you know, just under $100, which is not bad. And even just the anniversary miles you get on this card for renewing it would put me in the positive value range. But that's a large annual fee to manage. So 
let's talk about what's next for this card. Personally, I'm somebody that, like I said earlier in this video, does not have a problem with, you know, booking travel through their travel portal at least once a year to get that annual travel credit back. And I also do utilize a lot of their benefits like the airport lounge access here and there, which I'll be using more this year than I did in the past, as well as that Hertz president circle status, the cell phone protection, and much more. So I'm going to be getting enough positive value from this card, at least this year, to keep it open. I really do believe that this card gives you the most amount of premium benefits from a travel credit card for the lowest effective annual fee out of all of them on the market, really. So it makes it a great beginner luxury travel credit card for those that are just trying to get their feet wet, hence why I do still recommend it. At the same time, though, we did talk about a good amount of cons with this card, and one of which that I think is going to continue to negatively impact this card over the years to come is the constant nerfing of it that they continue to do. So while yes, right now, it's still a very easy card to get positive value from, even just by using the annual travel credit and the anniversary miles, I would expect this card to continue to get worse as time goes on. So basically, I would say that if you do want this card, I would get it while it's hot, but do expect it to cool off at some point. And of course, as with any card that I review, I give you all this information and my personal experience to tell you, well, exactly that, my experience with it. That does not mean that you're going to have the same experience with this card. I just hope that you take the information I give you today and extrapolate it to your personal goals and your personal setup to see how this card might fit in with yours. And again, I want to mention that it would mean a ton to me if you did decide to use links down in my description to apply for this card. But before you do that, definitely ask around and see if you have any friends or family that have a referral link for you to use so you can help them out first. If not, though, it would mean a ton to me if you did use mine. That way I can continue to produce this free content for y'all. At this point, though, if you do want to analyze basically all of your premium travel credit card options before applying for this one, I'll direct you into this video next. And as always, Odin and I both want to say thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel and we'll catch you guys next time.